Today's video is about a game that managed to scare the living shit out of nine-year-old me while simultaneously leading me down a dark path that would eventually awaken a burning of passion for Robot Heine. I'm of course talking about the classic Robot Fendom Simulator, System Shock 2. But before we begin, I'm sure you can already tell, this game looks really fucking old. It was developed by Looking Glass Studios and Irrational Games back in 1999, and while there are plenty of mods out there to make it look a bit more palatable, I won't be using any of these, because I personally enjoy the fact that my arm looks like a malformed potato. System Anyways. Shock 2 is a first-person survival horror game that is sort of like a spiritual prequel to the Bioshock franchise, Bruh. with an absolute bop of a soundtrack and some of those beautifully wonky old-school controls that take a bit of practice to get used to. And that alone may turn some people off from the game, but it's definitely worth learning because it's a pretty unique experience that you can't really find anywhere else. The map layouts are designed fantastically. The gunplay is awkwardly satisfying, and the melee combat was the direct inspiration of Tom Howard's Skyrim. The story takes place in the near future, where Tesla owns the entire world, and they're still sending cars into space. So, what do you, a man of extreme sexual prowess, do in this age of scientific innovation? Join the military. I'm doing my part! You start by choosing which branch of the military you want to join, the OSA, the Marines, or the Navy. The OSA focuses on using psionic powers to buff themselves and deal damage. It's pretty strong considering that they can buff their own stats using psionics, but the people that use psionics tend to be that of the vegetable variety. Hence why they use a metal stress ball to do anything which is why I'm going to tell you to ignore psionics entirely until you've played through the game once. The Marines is the very American way of playing the game, by increasing your proficiency with guns and explosives. It's a very safe option for a new player, but the main downside is that it's very difficult to get behind a lot of the doors and to really explore the map at the beginning of the game. So finally, we get to the Navy, who has given up their boats and sailor outfits to instead learn how to hack into the mainframe. Navy is, in my opinion, the best way to experience System Shock, because the Navy soldier can start off with the hacking skill, which is the single most important skill in System Shock. It can be used to open doors, disable turrets, and prevent you from being spotted by government surveillance drones. These are basically your three starting classes, but they don't lock you into any specific playstyle. They're mostly just to start you off in a specific direction. For instance, you could always start off as Navy to learn hacking at the beginning of the game, and then build into a psionic character. And after choosing your class, you still have to select three tours of duty, which will increase your stats or give you starting equipment, depending on what you choose. And finally, after finishing your tours, you're chosen to be in Elon's new space exploration pyramid scheme, using the Tesla patented faster than light engine. You're then awoken from cryosleep with a dodgy memory and a few legally questionable cybernetic enhancements. But before you can do anything, you're contacted by the ship's head scientist, Janice Polito, who tells you to meet her on deck 4. But unfortunately for you, during your cryosleep there's been a few broken doors, a rogue AI, and a severe infestation of athlete's foot that are now blocking your way. And since you forgot to bring your topical antifungal medication, getting to her is going to take a bit of work. You picked the wrong house, fool! Hey, hey! You'll have to find upgrades and learn skills to allow you to hack security systems, research items, and find bigger guns. And unfortunately for you, you're not going to be able to do all of it. Because upgrades cost cyber modules, and these are rewarded to the player scarcely throughout the game, for exploration and progressing the story. You'll have to pick what you want carefully, and it can be a bit daunting towards a new player, but there are still plenty of great guides out there if you really wanted one. Unfortunately, most of them are going to say that agility is a useless stat, and they're absolutely right, but that has never stopped me from maxing it. 
At this point in the game, you're basically just set off to explore the Von Braum and do any tasks that Janice asks of you. But figuring out how to do them and how you want to fail miserably at them is entirely up to you. So after beating your way through a few dozen hybrids, drinking a lot of sodas, and realizing you probably should have listened when you were told not to carry everything in the chemical storage room, this needs to stop now. You find out that Janice is actually dead. What a shame. And you've been talking to the AI Shodan instead, who is the main antagonist of System Shock 1, but she's totally good now. Shodan then informs the player that she actually created the many, and that they evolved past their control. A plot device that would later be stolen by the hit game, Spore. Since Shodan can't actually stop the many, she enlists your help to eradicate them. And along the way you'll fight corrupted robots, alien monsters, and what is in my opinion the most terrifying enemy in any video game. Psychic Monkeys. I'm not going to go any further into the story, because I don't want to spoil any more of the plot, but I will say it's definitely worth a few playthroughs. I usually come back to this game every other year or so, and other than the fact that I can never get the items in the starting jump, I always have a great time. So go pick up a copy. It's pretty cheap on Steam, even without a sale. And if old game design doesn't scare the living shit out of you, it's well worth the money. Just remember to turn the minimap on, because for some reason the devs decided to have it turned off by default. <laughs>